In this video, we are continuing our discussion of finding roots of equations. So we've talked about bracketing methods and we saw the bisection and false position methods. And then in the last video, we talked um, about open methods and introduced the fixed point iteration method. So in this one, we're gonna talk about the newton raphson method. So the newton raphson method is one of the most used methods for root finding. Um, and the reason for its success is that it converges very fast in most cases, and it can be extended quite easily to multivariable equations. Um, note, it's sometimes called uh, Newton's method, um, or as we've written here, the newton raphson method. So the idea with the newton raphson method is that if an initial guess for the root is xi, a tangent can be extended from the point xi and f of xi, so where um, this value xi meets the, uh, the function. And the point where this tangent crosses the x-axis usually represents an improved estimate of the root. So we can see this graphically. We've got a function here, f of x, and our root. So we have a, an estimate xi, and we can evaluate the function at f of xi. And then we can take a look at the slope, f prime of xi, and find where this slope meets the x-axis. And this gives us our next estimate, our improved estimate of the root, which we call xi plus one. So the newton raphson formula can be derived from this graphical representation. The slope here, um, f of xi, is uh, related to these quantities shown here. So f, of, f prime of xi is equal to f of xi minus zero. So the, the length of this line here divided by um, xi minus xi plus one. So this can be arranged, uh, rearranged to give us our next estimate um, based on the uh, information that we already know. So xi plus one is equal to xi minus f of xi divided by f prime of xi. And this is the um, formula for the newton raphson method that we use to update our estimate at each iteration. Now we can um, reach this, this formula um, in a sort of more formal method using um, the Taylor series expansion. So we have the Taylor series expansion of our function f of x around the um, estimate xi, we want to find a better estimate xi plus 1 using this Taylor series expansion. So f of xi plus 1 is equal to f of xi plus f prime xi times xi plus 1 minus xi plus um, order h squared, representing the, the remainder of the um, Taylor series expansion. So here xi plus 1 is the estimate of the root after iteration i plus 1, and xi is the estimate at iteration i. So if we assume that um, f of xi plus one is equal to zero, because we're trying to find when this function is equal to zero, that's our root, and we rearrange this, we can see that x of i plus one is approximately equal to xi minus f of xi divided by f prime of xi. So again, this gives us the same form of our formula um, as our graphical representation did. So unlike the previous methods that we've talked about, the newton raphson method relies on calculating the first derivative of the function. So this makes the procedure very fast. Um, however, it has two disadvantages. So first, the procedure doesn't work if the function f of x is not differentiable. And second, uh, with multivariable equations, the inverse of f prime of xi can be slow to calculate. So this is how the procedure works. We set an initial guess x0, an error tolerance epsilon s, and a maximum number of iterations n. Then we calculate the next estimate, xn plus 1, is equal to xn minus f of xn divided by f prime of xn. Then we calculate our approximate relative error in the same way that we have for other methods, and we compare with our error threshold epsilon s. If the absolute value of epsilon r is less than or equal to epsilon s, or if we've reached our maximum number of iterations, then we stop the procedure. Otherwise, we repeat and calculate our next estimate again. 
So let's look at an example. So we can consider the function f of x is equal to sine of 5x plus cosine 2x. And we examined this, um, this function previously in example 4.6. And we wish to find the roots of the equation. So if we plot this function from minus 1 to plus 1, we can see that there are three roots. And we, uh, we're going to go through finding each of these roots with different initial guesses. So here's our function. We need to find the derivative. So f prime of x is equal to 5 cosine 5x minus 2 sine 2x. And then we can use um, an error threshold of epsilon s is 0 0.0005 and a maximum number of iterations of 100 and determine the root with initial guesses of 0 0.4, 0 0.5, minus 0 0.5, and minus 0 0.25. So using um, a function that I wrote in MATLAB, we can plug in these different initial guesses and see the results. So with an initial guess of uh, x0 is equal to 0 0.4, you can see that we converge on our root um, fairly quickly after only about five iterations, and we find that the root is at 0 0.6732. So we started with an initial guess here of 0.4, and after a few iterations, we ended up finding the root here at 0 0.6732. And you can see how the relative error changes um, through the iterations. And here's the result for uh, our different values of x0. So with an initial guess of minus 0.5, we find the root at minus 0.5236, so that's this root here. With an initial guess of minus 0.25, we find a root at minus 0.22, so that's this root here. And with an initial guess of 0.5, we again find that first root at 0.67, so that is this root here. So you can run the function um, in MATLAB with these different initial guesses and um, see how the method progresses. And you can see that in each of these cases, the solution converged very, very quickly with only um, three or four iterations. So this demonstrates how the newton raphson method progresses through the iterations for the previous example with an initial guess of uh, x0 is equal to 0 0.4. So we start here um, with x is 0 0.4, and then um, at the, the function at f is 0 0.4, we find the slope, and that gives us our new estimate, which is x1, which is about 0 0.8568 in this case. Again, we find um, at the value of the function, we can find the slope, and that gives us our next estimate, which is 0 0.597 in this case. Um, again, at the value of the function, um, we find the slope, and that gives us our next estimate, which is 0.674, and then we can continue on until we have reached our desired accuracy, um, which in this case gives us a root at 0 0.6732. So it's important to talk about uh, convergence of the newton raphson method. Um, we saw that the Taylor series derivation of the method had that um, the order h squared, where we kind of um, to represent the remainder of the, the values. So this can provide theoretical insight regarding the rate of convergence of the method. So um, we know that the estimate xi plus 1 is related to the previous estimate xi by the um, formula given here. So we can rearrange this and say that f of xi plus f prime of xi times xi plus 1 minus xi is equal to 0. And let's call this equation 1. And using Taylor's theorem, assuming that xt is the true root and f of xt is equal to 0, because that is um, what we mean by having a root, then we can write um, this Taylor's equation as f of xt is equal to 0 is equal to f of xi plus f prime of xi times xt minus xi plus this remainder term f double prime c divided by 2 factorial times xt minus xi squared for some c in the interval between xi and xt. So again, remember that, that this part was just the remainder term in our Taylor series expansion. So let's call this uh, equation 2. So we can subtract these two equations. 2 minus 1 gives us the expression shown here. 
And we know that the error at our iteration i plus 1, or e i plus 1, is equal to the true value xt minus the approximate value xi plus 1. And at iteration i, our error is, is given by xt minus xi. So we can plug these into our expression here and rearrange to see that the error at i plus 1 is equal to minus f double prime c divided by 2 factorial f prime xi times the error at i squared. And if the method is converging, then f double prime c is approximately equal to f double prime of xt, and f prime of xi is approximately f prime of xt, because our estimates are becoming closer to our true value as it's converging. So this means that the error at iteration i plus 1 is proportional to the, er the error at i squared. So this means that the error is, um, is squared after each iteration, so that means the number of correct decimal places approximately doubles with each iteration, and this is called quadratic convergence. And this is, um, the, the derivation of this error estimate is not really important, but what's important is that the method has this quadratic convergence, um, which is why it converges uh, quite quickly. And you can look at the tables in the previous example to see how the error changes with each iteration, and you can see that um, it follows approximately this quadratic convergence. So although the Newton-Raphson method tends to be very efficient, there are situations where it performs poorly. So these are just a few examples. So in this um, top example here, you can see we start with a value of x0, and then um, because of this inflection point near the root, we actually end up, um, as we're progressing through our iterations, we actually end up diverging. And so the method does not converge in this case. Um, in this second example here, you can see that sometimes the Newton-Raphson method has a tendency to get stuck at a local minimum or a local maximum. So here, we're, as we're progressing through the iterations, you can see that it's kind of oscillating around this local minimum. Um, and so what can happen is that it can sometimes get stuck and continue to oscillate around the local minimum. And in some cases, like in this, um, in this example here, it can actually eventually shoot off away from the root. Um, and in this case, it would diverge. If we started with a slightly different initial guess that ended up causing us to shoot off in this other direction, then we would um, potentially eventually converge on the actual route. Um, it just would be rather slow convergence due to this oscillations getting stuck around this local minimum. Um, in this next example, you can see we started with initial guess over here. And then um, fairly quickly, we ended up in a situation where we shot off into this other direction, past a few different routes, and so we would potentially end up converging, but it may be um, converged to a, a route that is far from our initial guess, so far from what we kind of initially wanted. And then the last case um, shown here is when we have um, the value, when we actually hit the value of a function where the derivative is exactly zero, we end up shooting off into the distance um, straight horizontal and then never crossing the x-axis, which of course um, is a problem for this method. Basically, then you're dividing by zero when you're dividing by the derivative, so that of course is a problem. So here's just a couple of examples um, kind of illustrating the same types of things. So with this function, f of x is equal to x cubed minus x plus 3, um, we can see how the algorithm performs with a few different initial guesses. So with an initial guess of negative 0.1, the algorithm ends up getting stuck where the function has a near zero slope, um, kind of in this local minimum, and it converges very slowly. So in this case, it does eventually sort of get out of this area um, and over into kind of the area where our, our root is, and we do eventually converge on the root, but it takes 33 iterations um, in this case. And so you can see kind of how the relative error progresses, where it's oscillating, and then eventually it does end up converging. With an, an, the same function, an initial guess of zero, the algorithm ends up getting stuck in an infinite loop. So um, here we end up 
if you look at the values of the, the estimate, you can see that at some point um, after the first view, we end up getting to this point where we always have the same kind of pattern. So three and then 1.96, 1.1, 0.007. 3, 1.96, 1.1, 0.007. 3, 1.96, 1.1, 0 0.007. So you can see that the relative error ends up um, oscillating um, between these values. And um, when you look at this graph here of, of how the um, estimate is progressing, you end up having the same four values in a row. So this is a, an infinite loop that would eventually not converge on the root, which is over here. And if we choose um, an initial guess that is close to the, closer to the root, so in this case, um, x0 is minus 1. In this case, it's sufficiently close to converge very quickly. So you can see after only six iterations, um, we found the root. And you can see how the relative error progresses in this case, um, again, converging very quickly. But what is considered sufficiently close depends on the shape of the function, the behavior of the function. Um, and uh, kind of what else is, is, is happening. So we, there's no, in general, there is no um, convergence criteria for the newton raphson method. Uh, the convergence depends on the nature of the function and the initial guess. So good computer software should be designed to recognize slow convergence or divergence to kind of help with some of these issues. So some things that you can do is at the end of the computation, the final root estimate could be substituted into the original function to check that the value of the function f of xr um, at the, the estimate of the root is actually close to zero. So this could would safeguard against situations where the our error estimate um, essentially tells us the, the difference in the iterations. So if the iterations are becoming very close together, but we're actually not getting to a point where um, the function is getting close to zero, then this additional check would, would help to safeguard against a situation like that. The program could also or should also include an upper limit on the number of iterations, so that prevents it from getting stuck in an infinite loop um, and just running forever. So you could then, you know, export or um, spit out at the end uh, a, a note that says the value or the maximum number of iterations was reached, so this uh, estimate that we ended up with may not be an actual root.